It's business as usual at Drew Pritchard's shop in North Wales, where eclectic antique finds reign supreme. Ah, now there's some wood I wanted you to use. The customers are flocking. The phone is constantly ringing. Good afternoon, Drew Pritchard's. Well, it's been non-stop. There's been sales upon sales this week. And Drew's wife, Rebecca, is overseeing a very important delivery. By hook or by crook, Jesus will be with you on Saturday. So, we sold Jesus, and he's going to West Sussex. Let's load Jesus. Recently rescued from a convent school in Cheshire, Jesus is about to take up his new home in Sussex, where he's been bought by a collector of religious artefacts. But he seems reluctant to leave. Can walk on water, but he can't get over that. <laughs> Jesus has left the building. For Drew, it's time to hit the road in his quest to discover the next salvage revelation. The shop looks a bit dead now, not having Jesus lying around here. Uh, so I've time for me to get back out on the road and see if I can hunt down some more stuff. Drew and Julian are on a five-hour journey south to a scrapyard in Devon. And, as usual, they're arguing with the sat-nav. Oh, no, you haven't. You have. What? What, 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 what? Go the right way. You're pointing us over the road, but there we go. No, no, this is it. Okay. Colonel's name is Ralph. Yeah. And it's in an old house. Yes. With the yard all the way around it. Well, that'll be good, because, I mean, I've been selling so much stuff, I really do need to find something architecturally interesting. But you don't know if there's anything here at all? We don't know for definite, no. There's nothing. We're going no. in blind. We are going in blind, unfortunately. God. Going in blind isn't an ideal situation for Drew. Whoa, look at that place. That was... Uh, Jesus <laughs> Christ, look at that. But he perks up when he gets his first glance of this stunning property loaded with every treasure a salvager could dream of. I'll be very surprised if we don't find something here. When I drove down the driveway and you see the big old house and tons and tons of junk lying around everywhere, I just thought, this is great. I'm going to fill the van, I'm going to have to go and hire another one. It's got everything going. It's like you have a tick box of, right, big old house, tick. Big piles of old junk, tick. Dog, tick. Knackered old car, tick. It's sort of got all of the things that I like. Um, so who knows? I hope so. Good. It feels good. feels right. Hi, Ralph. Yeah. Hello. Hi, Drew. How's it? Hello, Drew. Nice Hi, to how meet you. Doing? Hiya. Yeah. Julie. Julie. Hello. How are you, Ralph? OK. Yeah. Everything is for sale at, at the right price. We've got architectural salvage, motorcycles, cars, um, scrap metal, uh, furniture, everything. Where do we start? Where do, where, where do we go first? It's up to you. Start where you like. Whatever you like the look of. Here, should we do this yep. bit around yep. here? Should we have a look yep. through here? Yeah, that's it. This is our... Yeah. Um, this is our office and workshop and uh, where we run our business from. God, it's fabulous, isn't it? Yeah. Has this been built on or is this the stables no, for the it, house? No, it, it's always been here. It's been adapted as a workshop, but it's always been here. You know, the building's 1830 and... Yeah. Uh, so, I don't know, I'm getting pulled towards that room. Can I have, just have a yeah. sift in there? Let, let's go there. Is there any old furniture from the original house here? I should imagine there isn't. That sure. may be underneath. That, that looks that like a piece at the back. That looks like a dresser. Yeah. That's yeah. got like a kitchen cabinet type plate rack. And... Yeah. And that was in the building? That was here, yeah. OK. What was this room? Was this the kitchen? This was the kitchen, yeah. Yeah. Can we get up that end? Yeah. You're a Debbie McGee, the assistant. Absolutely. He is. Better kisser. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Go on. Lift it. Hang on, hang on. Caught Jules, it's got underneath this chair, this table. That's a, a, it. a snooker light as well, look. Or is this on its original base? Yeah. Oh, I see. This piece is in a poor state, but a fully restored Victorian dresser can fetch around a thousand pounds. It's really original, this, but I just think the condition's just too far. It's not yeah. too far gone, but it's just beyond making any money on, I think. So, uh, so what would you want for this? I would really like a thousand pounds for it, but. Um... I'm really pushing the boat out if I'm offering him 200 quid. It's rotten, the bottoms have fallen out, the drawers, the sides have fallen off it, the top's split. It's full of woodworm. Some of the drawer fronts are missing and half the handles are missing. But I really wanted it. Are you 
Is it really a thousand pounds? I'd like a thousand pounds for it, but really? you can always bid me. How far apart? It would are be we? hugely insulting, so I'm probably no, no, not it's going okay. to. I don't mind. It, you can insult me; it doesn't matter. Unfortunately, yeah. we're going to have to leave that where it is. Yeah. It's a really nice thing, but there's a huge disparity between what I can give you for that and what you want for it. Yeah. Yeah. Furniture prices have dropped quite a bit, especially brown, old-fashioned furniture. There's only certain items that make, you know, a really good profit. Some of the stuff we've got to keep and maybe never get our money back for. It's Drew's worst nightmare. The room is loaded with exactly the type of period furniture he usually buys. But the roof has been leaking for several years and has wreaked havoc. Everything in that room is, for want of a better expression, knackered. All of it is just finished. The roof is leaking directly onto everything underneath. It's damp, it's open to the elements. Keep spotting things and going, oh, look at that, and then it's, there's half of it's missing and... Oh, Jesus. I'm just yeah. looking at marvelling at all these motorbikes you've got lying around everywhere. Yeah, they're, they're up there for security reasons as well. And I like to look at them, you know. I like the little bits of glass stick into yeah. them. Yeah, very reflective. Yeah, little old cat size. LEDs. LEDs, yeah. <laughs> Early LEDs. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> right, let's go into the house now and... Uh... Drew heads inside the main house. Getting inside country houses is a big deal. Off and off limits, this is where the good stuff is usually kept. Come on. Right, this is... Uh, Ooh, good. Um, yeah, this the stuff... my home. So, there's stuff everywhere here. Yeah. Wallop, it's just bedlam. There's stuff piled up. The scaffolding in the hallway with stuff on top of that. There's piles of furniture. There was, you know, right, right against the side of us, there was these two sort of gothic altar rail sections. I don't know where he's got those from, but they're, they're, they're not that old. These pieces probably date from a church built in the early 20th century and could bring around £120 each. Don't know, get the ball around 100 quid. It's yeah. not, it's really not worth any more to me because it's just a couple of bits. I just thought, might you know, get the ball rolling. Yeah. Um, don't feel obliged, but no, you know, no, I, you know, I, I, I would to... sell it. I'd really want like 100 pound per piece, per but, piece you know, more. or or we may yeah. negotiate in the middle, but you can always think about yeah, it. Yeah, no, I've got, I've got to see a profit in it. That's, yeah, that's yeah. the thing. I've got to, I've got to see some money in it. I don't really like to sell them, as you can probably tell by the prices, you know, they're, they're just lovely things, you know. What's this then? A bollard. Fallen tree. Road closed. This would have been lit at night. What sort of money I, would I'd, you I'd see I'd want a thousand quid for it, you know, because it's, that is really old. The road closed, bollard didn't excite me, and then it excited me even less when I found out it was a thousand pounds. So, yeah, that was like, I was like... Most of the stuff I sell, I like to double my money at. I try and buy at bargain prices and sell it double, you know, 100% markup, you know. If fully restored, these Victorian hall chairs could sell for around £250 each. I do quite like them. What, what, what can you do them for? I, to be honest with you, I paid a lot of money for them, whether... Yeah, if know, in this condition. I, I paid about four or 500 quid for the three. Yeah. You're never going to get that back? No, I know. You're never yeah. going to get that money back? I would imagine that me and Drew are probably the same. You, you only buy something that you can basically double your money on, or maybe even more, or buy something because you like it to keep. So this is Georgian again. Yeah, it's all right, isn't it? It's just a writing desk. Complete Georgian writing desk can sell for at least £500, but in its current state, this one is worth much less. Price again? Um, I don't know. You, you, you have to bid me. No, go on. I've done the last two or three and you've knocked me back. I, I'd like 500 quid. 500 quid. quid. Yeah. OK, no, we'll Junior? leave that. Yeah, it is for me. Yeah. It's for me. Just because you leave something in a hallway for 50 years and it's rotten doesn't make it worth more money. If I can't buy anything in the next half an hour or find some common ground we can try and do some deals, we'll have to walk away, which is a hell of a shame because this is just a... I mean, look at the building. It's just a honeypot full of stuff. There's so much stuff here. That is acres of stuff, but we need to have a little bit of a reality check on the prices. Unless things change, it could be time for Drew to cut his losses and leave. Parking meter. Parking meter. London parking meter. <laughs> No, not for me. No money left it. on it. No, no. Expired. They've not quite fallen all apart yet. After an hour of looking around, Drew's original excitement has completely evaporated. But I'm just frustrated. Um, uh, coming here to deal with Ralph. Uh, he's a, you know, he's a nice enough guy, but as soon as we got down to, to money side of things, just like, whoa, we're, we're just living on diff two different worlds. Um, the condition of the stuff is at best appalling. Um, it's just... Knackered. Oh 
owner, Ralph, has an unusual philosophy when it comes to selling. Not making a deal is, is just as good as making a deal sometimes. You know, it, it's the, the chase, you know, really. Drew needs a strategy. The plan of attack today is to find something Ralph is not so attached to and get him back down to, you know, back down to earth, really, on his prices. We've got lots of signs here. Looking at it, I would say it's... 40s to 60s, huge time period it's in there, but... Um, yeah, it, it, it's it is a very, it's a very really, early. Yeah. It's a difficult one. You reckon it's earlier than that, sort yeah. of traction? Yeah, it could be from 1908, couldn't it even? Well, I don't know. <laughs> Founded in 1919, Citroen was known for its clever advertising, and early examples like this can sell for as much as £250. What I'm saying is, is the gauge of the steel, and yeah. it's still it's yeah. pretty, um, pretty basic. Yeah. Very, very thin. It's real, anyway. But it's real, and I like it. Yeah. So it's a good decorative thing. Yeah. I like Citroen, so I've had a few two CVs, and just something... It just looked so simple, great colour, good size, great condition, and looked period as well. It's got a bit of age to it. So what sort of, um, what sort of price is that, then? I would really want 100 quid for it. Genuine French. There's a little bit of damage to the bottom. Could we do £75 for that one? Yeah, just, just this once I'll do it, but it's worth more with the damage, really, but 75 quid. <laughs> OK. Sometimes patience is the key, and it takes a bit of time to build up a rapport with somebody. I like it. Yeah. So it's a good decorative thing. Yeah. Yeah, no, lovely. OK, we'll have that. Drew's strategy seems to be paying off. Now the ball is rolling, he's beginning to think he may be able to do some deals with Ralph after all. He's off outside, where the treasures are literally buried. As we've got all sorts in here again, haven't we? So this jack, what's, what's that in there? That's, that's a Mark II Jag. Mark II Jag? Yeah. The, the other one, the other side is a, a, a Mark, Mark IX. IX. Yeah, OK. You're really discovering them, aren't you? Can't even see. There's three motorbikes down here. There's a, a BS, two BSAs and one in the middle here. I'm just trying to identify. Yeah, cos I'm not sure what's there myself. I'm just trying to identify. Hang on, is it a Triumph? Is that a Thunderbird? I hope it is. <clears throat> Almost impossible to tell now the condition's gone so bad. Seeing all these beautiful cars and, and everything just lying around is starting to really sort of... I have to be honest, it's ticking me off a bit. To be very British about it, but it just is. Drew hates to leave anywhere empty-handed and carries on the search. Oh, yeah. Aha. Eventually, he spots something he knows he can sell and that he definitely wants. That's nice. You know, it's not terrible, is it? It's not in great, Nick. Let's see what he wants for it. But first, he has to deal with Ralph and those prices. We found a um, sign up in the back there. Yeah. As well, so I just want to discuss that with you, but... Uh, I love the motorbike. Yeah. That's fantastic. I like that a lot. The sign, it's nice. What do, yeah. you, what do you want for it? It's a, li it's, it's a good one, but it's got a lot of damage. Yeah. Appealing to car enthusiasts, collectors, designers, film and TV prop buyers, Drew knows he can easily sell a sign like this for around £450. Um, I really want 200 quid for it, but, you know, it is a big one, so it's a, yeah. you know, hard to buy and hard to sell, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, but it's a nice... The Union Jack's always going to be yeah, good on it. Yeah, yeah. OK. All right, yeah, we'll have it. Yeah. Drew's surprised that they've reached a price he can work with, but not as surprised as Ralph. In a way, I was surprised he bought it, you know. Um, probably I'm learning about the price as well now, cos if he, if he can pay 200 and make a profit, you know, it's, it's got to be good. We, we've done very well on that one in the past, more than doubled our money on it again, so that should hopefully... Hopefully, we should get close to that again. We've had a good day, and it's nice to see somebody from a different part of the world, you know, Welsh people or, you know, a, a, almost a different world, different country, isn't it? Probably. Yeah. Stick it on. Come on. Great stuff. Right, nice to meet you. Take care. So how do you think that went? Didn't get enough. No, but two signs ain't going to pay the bills. No. To be honest. It just wasn't happening today. It didn't happen today. This ten-hour road trip has reaped little reward. Drew and Julian arrive back at base, and they're not looking forward to explaining an empty van to the waiting team. 
Hello. Hello. How you doing? Hello. On the shore. How's everything going? Oh, yeah, great. No, Sold no. anything? What do you mean, no? no? <laughs> Sunbathing and reading the paper. Well, yeah, no change there. Nothing there. No, it's rubbish, isn't it? Nothing was going cheap, but I got this off him, and uh, 200 pounds. I'm confident we're going to double our money on that. If you can just set to and polish that, please, Gavin. And from the same guy's scrapyard, we got this, which I I, I love this. Ah. How cool's that? Citroen. Citroen enamel sign. Yeah. Lasts longer than the cars. <laughs> <laughs> Right. Come on, don't milk it. Get on with it. Why don't you shut off and it's stop? Not, it's not fine restoration. It. Throw a bucket of water over it. Come on. <laughs> it looks loads better to me. It looks funky and, and it feels French. And again, it just goes in with that very, very strange mix that we do. When he comes back with an empty van, it's really sad to see. And you can see his face a mile off, the disappointment uh, of all the effort that he's gone into. But the only thing we can do is um, turn him around, pack him off in the van again, and uh, hopefully he'll find some more treasures. The next day, Julian and Drew follow up on a lead Rebecca has lined up for them. It's a rare opportunity to visit one of Europe's largest aircraft salvage yards. It's a four-hour journey south to Gloucester. And with Drew already coming up short from yesterday's buying fiasco in Devon, the heat is on to find something worth bragging about. So today we're in Gloucestershire to see a company called Air Salvage. Cool name or what? Planes? Yeah. Oh, right. Like it says on the tin, Air oh, Salvage. It's so it's bits everything. of things that have been in the air that are then salvaged. So these guys, right, they take old planes apart. Apparently, people fly it, can still fly a plane in and then they take it to pieces carefully, properly, yeah. and sell the individual pieces off. It's really exciting. What what could we find? God knows what. Most of don't want me to fly anything, I'll be all right. <laughs> <laughs> don't like flying. Oh, yeah. I do fly, but it's just massive amounts of drugs and gin. <laughs> <laughs> There's nothing wrong with massive amounts of drugs and gin. Yeah. Two Valium and a gin and tonic, and I'll fly anywhere. <laughs> Blimey, that's huge. We need our high vis today. Bradley. How are you doing? Drew. Drew. How are you doing? Hi, Julie. Jules. I'm Bradley Gregory, and we dismantle aircraft. We remove the the aircraft parts to go into the second-hand market. Not just anybody can come in. It's, it's usually invitation. We've got a lot of returning customers. A lot of the stuff is cut to order, so it's it's quite unique. Wow. We, we just store aircraft in this one. People just pay us to store them in, in the hangar. So is that a private plane? That's somebody's toy? Yeah, it's someone's private toy. Really? Wow. <laughs> well, that's pretty impressive, isn't yeah. it? What I'm looking for here is something real oddball, something you're not going to expect. And it's taking something that is obviously from a plane and then being able to use it in uh, a commercial or domestic setting. So something that you think, God, that's off a plane, but doesn't it look cool? So maybe like a door handle or a ceiling lamp or a chair or a piece of bodywork. Right then, guys, this is where the, the aircraft reach the final stage of their life. Blimey. That's a cool piece. Say, if, how much to cut something like that off? It's about 350 pounds. 350 pounds for a whole wing of a... For, for two metres from the end. It's not bad, is it? You can make one of those desks, you make a desk out of it. You know, just a, just mounting it on a wall, just yeah. a piece of art, it's brilliant. Really beautiful sort of sculptural really shapes, cool. so all the pieces for, of these. It makes you want to buy a piece. There are incredible pieces everywhere, but Drew's keeping his ambitions firmly on the ground. I like the wheels as well. Um, I think it's normally about 100 pounds. 100 quid for a wheel? Yeah. While I'm tempted to buy a great big piece of a jumbo jet, I have to be mindful of what happens here is then I have to get that cut up, I have to get it worked on, it's going to cost me money. Um, that's no good. I need to find something that I can convert easily. So, something I've got a ready market for, chairs, lamps, something decorative. I've got people for that, I can sell it quickly. Wow. Can we go up there? What's, is that into the cockpit? No? That, yeah, that is into the cockpit. I don't know how stable it is. Yeah, be OK. Wow. So where do we go? Th wow, this is amazing. It's weird, because you imagine these things are going to get scrapped, 
but you don't really think about it. No. Walking through the sort of bare bones of the plane, it's like walking inside some sort of huge fish or a whale. You know, you can see the ribs of the plane. Uh, it's amazing, really. Though amazed by the engineering, this stripped-back cabin also gives Drew some justification for his fear of flying. And that's the outer skin. Yeah. That's not the outside so of the really plane. Nothing. Yeah, that's Is the that outside it? of the plane. It didn't sound very really thick, mate. Mm -hmm. It's not. It's probably only a two, two to three mil thick. That's it. That's yeah. it. That's the outside. It's me not flying again. <laughs> you don't fly anyway. No, that's true. <laughs> so this is what I this is what a dead aircraft looks like. This is this is it. Now this is the end of its like this is finished. Yeah. You're going to cut this one up. This one's going to be cut up. So we're going to cut the front section from this to make a, a training program. So what, like a flight simulator. A flight simulator. It does have a very strange feeling wandering around inside a jumbo jet that's in bits. You never you never want to be in that situation, do you really? Um, so seeing it uh, taken apart, disassembled is very strange. You know, you're wandering around, it's slightly eerie. Is, is this all sold? He sold all this gear? All of the cabin interior on this is sold. This is taking Very salvaging niche. to a whole new level. It really is. Yeah, let's take another look in the cockpit. And even though this plane is not going anywhere, the 40-year-old salvage hunter reverts to a nine-year-old boy and asks to go up front. It's really cool, isn't it? Where, yes, he pretends to fly the plane. But this is Drew Pritchard. And even whilst having fun, he spots some potential salvage. What seats are these? These are the cockpit seats. Exactly what I've been looking for. So it's a great big pair of pilot seats, co-pilot seats. Leather, huge, armrests, very funky base, loads of rivets, odd size, odd construction, strange looking. Got it all. That's what I'm looking for. Yeah. So what would what would something like this cost me today to buy in that condition? An older seat like this in this conditions around about five thousand dollars is the the going price for it. Really? Um, How much do you want? Five thousand dollars. <laughs> I don't want it that much. Let's be careful. We'll put it back. We'll put it back down gently. Very yeah. carefully. Thanks, Bradley. <laughs> you know, five thousand pounds. I'm sure uh, uh, if I needed to buy a plane seat for my. Boeing 747, that's what they're going to cost. But I only want them for sort of decoration in somebody's house or flat or bar. OK, I'll, how can I, yeah, I do want one of those. <laughs> for Another about day. 250 quid. Another day. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But it's clear that Bradley's customers expect to pay more than salvage hunter prices. And reluctantly, Drew deplanes in search of something more affordable. We've got over 15,000 items on our books in this hangar. He's conscious that the team back home will be very unhappy if he doesn't buy anything. And he's pinning all his hopes on this final hangar. It's going to... There's so much here to take in. These rocker switches, like those, lights off a fighter plane sort of thing, aren't they? Oh, it's, it is, it says arm. Everything is just so good looking. They're quite cool, aren't they? What do you think of these, Jules? Look at that. This is the cockpit door from a 737. How much are they? Uh, they're two fifty each. Two fifty each. Just thinking, as a pair of double doors, how much am I going to get for one of those? Those four hundred, four hundred and fifty pounds, maybe. 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 It's not reversible. That's the problem. Because you got the cutouts here. You got that latch piece think. sticking out. I was just thinking that and that will swap. But, but so look at the work <laughs> doing it. That's huge, massive. huge amount of work. Altering them going to take hundreds of man hours to take it apart alter it, mess about with it, and then get a return. All the latches are on the right. And to take one of the hinges off, that's, that's going to take me a week. So just too much work. I'm just, I just lose money like a dripping tap if I bought those. What I'd like to find is something that is obviously from a plane, but it's got a secondary use, so it can be used in a house, restaurant, mm -hmm. hotel, bar, shop fit, something like that. So that's, that's very close, isn't it? I got really excited then. I thought, God, we found something super. Do you have um, seats? I thought, well, they're going to be good for bars, restaurants, home cinemas, something like that. And they're very stylish as well. What are they out of? Obviously. These are a 737, a Russian 737. A Russian 737. If that commercial. makes all the difference. <laughs> 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 I'm not flying in a Russian plane again. <laughs> <laughs> no, there you go. Oh. That's oh, nice. <laughs> How much is this one? This is 250. 250 quid. That's not bad, is it? It's not terrible. Not terrible. It's not 
like that, but slightly more stylish. They're sort of not quite there, you know, they're not quite right, they're just not funky enough, very comfortable. This stuff just doesn't have that edge to it. They look a little bit mundane, a little bit workaday, because I'm looking for something that, you know, is not really their stocking trade. I'm looking for something very, very stylish, odd, weird, funky, you know, I can do something else with, and uh, they're in the spares market. So it's, it's two different worlds trying to sort of make sense of each other. What about bits and pieces like this? Hostess trolleys. Now I'm going to pass on those. These are from light aircraft. No, it's still not working for me. You? No, not at all. No. Cool. Nearly there. Nearly there. These are interesting, Bradley. I like the look of them. These are the, the galley trays. These go so in, these inside there. They go into the, the actual galley unit. How much are these? Uh, they're 25 each. 25 quid each. But we don't have many, because they're quite popular. These insulated food boxes are exactly the type of thing Drew's designer and shop-fitting customers will like. They could easily sell for around £40 each, and they've certainly got Drew's creative juices flowing. My thinking is, you know, these things are great shop fits. And, you know, in your bathroom, you know, have, have just a stack of them, you know, just pile them all up to the ceiling. Very simple to fit together, very easy to attach to a wall. Great, so they were, they were like a great find. I was hoping there was going to be lots of them. Is this all you've got? That's all we've got, just there, three. Oh, OK. Oh, yeah. But they're really funky locks, aren't they? I think they're cool things. Um, if I took... Can I, have, can I have three for 60 quid? £20 a piece? They're quite popular. Well, these aren't that popular, you've still got these left. Those ones are. Oh, I, right, I, okay. I, I can take them away tonight. So, what, is that a no, then? It'd have to be 25 each. Has to be 25. All in yeah. for three. I think Bradley is very, very governed on his prices. The prices are the prices. I don't think if you're buying the wing off a of Boeing, they're going to haggle too much. So, that's off today. Yeah. Got yeah, yeah. Fine, we'll take them. Okay. Yeah, no, for sure, we'll take those. I bought three little things. Um, but you never know, he might phone me up and say, look, I've got another jet in, it's got 50 of these things in, do you want them? It was worth going there for that, for sure. A good contact, and I saw those beautiful old planes. Thanks very much for coming. No, look, thanks. Really appreciate it. Nice to see it. you. That's been good. Thank we'll you. See you again, hopefully. If you get any more of those boxes or any of the seats we discussed, just send me some emails. Let you know straight away. Great stuff. Thank you very thanks much. Thanks very much, guys. Cheers, bye-bye. Bye-bye. Happy? Over the moon. Because I'm with you. And you're my hero. <laughs> Back in the van, Drew and Julian realise that three small boxes is not going to cut it back in Wales. Yeah, I'll tell you what, we're going to get grief when we get back to the shop. <laughs> what have you bought? Hey, what One... you got? Ah, Rebecca's <laughs> going to kill you. Oh. Really tough week, um, really little reward. It'll discourage Drew for a short period of time, but he will bounce back. He'll come back from it, but he's going to be a bit down tonight, I think. And I'm going to be drunk. <laughs> so they put off the day of reckoning, and rather than head back to the shop, they spend another day on the road investigating a new lead in East Sussex. I'm afraid you missed out on the Peronis last night. Really? It was a Peroni night last night. Oh, my good God. I got into my bed, and it was like literally sitting in a marshmallow. So I, I could, you, you can't move. It's been a tough week for us so far this week. Uh, we've travelled several hundred miles, and we've only picked up a few piddly little things. But uh, Mark has just rang me, and he's come up with a really good lead. It sounds like he's got some exceptional stuff, so we're going to go straight round. They're off to battle in East Sussex to see Jeremy Trinder, a collector and budding inventor who has contacted Drew because he needs a clear-out. My family's always collected things, so I've been brought up with it. So it's, you know, it's uh, just carried on from there, really. It just seems a natural thing to do. He's got, and I'm not joking, a Batman suit he made himself for himself. No. The kind of stuff that I'm drawn to and, and enjoy are kind of one-off pieces which are slightly unique, slightly off the wall, a bit... Uh, a bit out there. He collects all manner of stuff. There's no real rhyme or reason to what he collects. A weird mix of stuff. But he might have something. This must be it. That's lovely, isn't it? Look at that. Jeremy. Hi, Drew. Drew. Hi. Nice to meet you. How are you? All right. Very well, thank you. Yeah. Hello, mate. This is James, my son. Hello, James. Hi, James. 
got, we've got a lot of stuff and it's, it's just time to get rid of some now and make, make some space. Otherwise, we're going to end up like sort of hoarders and that can't happen. So you've got a lot of stuff lying around. We might as well start here, if you like. Yeah, sure. have, a, have a look. Have a look. Oh, my God, look at that. We weren't expecting that, were you? No. <laughs> <laughs> I love the fact that he's built a time machine in his shed. Don't really need to say any more. He built a time machine in his shed. So is it a copy of the one off the time, yeah, off the time machine? Yes, it is, yeah, the H.G. Wells one. Does it work? We haven't wow. tested it out yet. We haven't tested it out yet. Yeah, okay. we've got to uh, okay. do a bit more wiring and then... All right, uh, OK. Where are so we going to go first? This is properly mad. It really is. What possessed you to make this, then? We... Uh, I remember the film from when I was a kid, and uh, I said those fatal words, I think we could build that. What a top dad. He's built a time machine for his little boy in his shed. I make a lot of the stuff. I suppose some of it's nostalgia from my point of view. And it's just great for him, because he's out there with me and he's building stuff and getting involved in it all, and it's better than him sitting in front of the television. Well, fantastic. Well, clearly, you're a man after my own heart, so I'd like to have a look around what you've got for sale and just oh. have, a, have a poke about. But that's really... You can't really top that, can you? I don't know. You're going to have to try hard. Yeah. Anything in the boxes I need to know about? I don't no, want to go no, opening no, all the boxes. Uh, to be honest, probably the only thing, unless you want a mummified cat, the only other thing in here is probably Ooh, is this safe a mummified that you might cat? Like. Oh, my good God. Good grief. It is just like a little satanic, devilly looking thing. Look at his teeth. I've had that since I was 12. My auntie gave me that. It's great. I like that. Unbelievably, there is a market for mummified cats. In medieval times, it was considered good luck to seal a live cat in the walls of new homes. They are sometimes uncovered during restorations and can sell for up to £2,000. Like You're not going to get it, pal. <laughs> <laughs> but Drew decides against the cat and goes from something macabre to something gothic. What's that there? Uh, they're Lights. Uh, light cages, yeah. Are these for sale, Jeremy? Yeah, yeah they can be. They yeah. could be, yeah. Yeah, yeah. They're very well made. I don't think they're very old. They're probably only 20 or 30 years old, if that. They're a great decorative pair of wall-mounted torches. Put a big pair of candles in there. They're just a cool-looking thing. Put your candles in, stick them outside. Look oh, pretty. Cool. Late 20th century decorative wall torches like these are popular with props companies and interior designers and could sell for almost £300 the pair. I think £60 is about right. That sounds fair, I think it? if they were older, they'd be worth an awful lot more... Yeah, well, yeah. they would be worth yeah. an awful lot more money, but they're, they're not. Um, but they've got something about them. They've got a sort of Gaudi-esque bit to the top there. And... Yeah, so 60 that's for good. the pair. That's, that's fair enough. Is that yeah. all right? That's good. Yeah, that's, that's fair. fair. Yeah. OK, great stuff. So you got some stained-glass windows? Oh, or yeah, leaded I windows? Had those rather. Well, we were going to put them in our new extension, but we opted for something else in the end. They're quite pretty, aren't they? I like these because they're in a cast-iron frame. Second half of the 19th century, those are going to be. But these are something you'd, you'd, you'd want to get rid of? Yeah, for sure, yeah, because, I mean, I'd have to build a summer house now just to put those in. <laughs> <laughs> Once restored, Victorian stained-glass windows like these can fetch around £220 for a pair. What do you want to do for these? 60 quid. For the pair? Mm-hmm. Yeah, OK, right. we'll have those. Yeah. They've got that sort of uh, lancet effect to the top there. They're very pretty. They've both got moulded glass roundels. We've given them a polish. They look a million dollars. OK, lead on. More sheds. OK. Shed round the corner here. OK, looks good already. So what have you got in there? Oh, my good God. Yeah, Your I, kids I... must be traumatised. He's been brought up on it, so he's quite used to it, but... Uh... And you're married. Yes. Yeah. Married, <laughs> <isn't it>? <laughs> <laughs> he's the classic British... Um, eccentric, and there's just not enough of them around. There's a lot here, actually, isn't there? There's another metal sign up here, but I don't think that's French. I quite like it, though. It's, it's a nice little decorated thing for a restaurant or something like that. Enamel signs are something Drew can always sell. There are many fakes around, but assuming this one's genuine, it should fetch around £120. 20 quid. That's more than fair. Just a good little decorated thing. For a pub, restaurant, that type of thing, that's probably where it's going to end up. Some more of this fairground stuff up here. So what do you reckon? Is that the same again? Same sort of price? Yeah, around. Yeah, I yeah, think they're 20 quid. We'll, we'll, we'll take it for that. So what's this, then? That was for a Halloween party that we had, and basically there was a light, in, there's a light that goes inside it, a brain, that, a plastic <laughs> brain, that goes inside the jar full of water and then a pond pump which bubbles, so it lights up green and the water bubbles away, so it's part of a Frankenstein prop display that we did. <laughs> 
teaching aid one, aren't they? These. There, there you go, move for the Halloween thing. You really no, you know, I, want to this I, thing, I just you? wanted a couple yeah. of skeletons, really. It's yeah, just, uh... of course you do. Yeah, I'm quite into the Halloween thing because I like that aspect of the unexpected for people. You know, they come here and they'd be like slightly like, ooh, like that, but then they're, yeah, that's, that's good. Green Goblin. Green Goblin helmet. What for, for people? Yeah, care, the padding's not in there, so be careful. Oh, and actually, if I press this button... It hurts, you, actually. Uh... Oh, my God, God, my God. <laughs> Sorry, was it? <laughs> You're really out there, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> the only other thing was that you've got, you've got this fruit picker ladder behind you. Yeah, I've got another one just up there, it's a bit shorter. Agricultural antiques like these fruit pickers' ladders are very rare. After restoration, Drew could sell these for around £220. OK, so what do you, what do you want to do? do? Are they for sale? They, they, Something they can you'd be sell? for sale, yeah. Uh, 20 quid each. Oh, yeah, that's fine. They're good decorative pieces, aren't they? So I'm really glad I called in. I didn't think we'd get anything. And uh, he's got loads of stuff in the house he wants to show me now as well, so I want to get in there. Not only are the prices great, but Jeremy's taste coincides perfectly with Drew's. What a great looking place. Thank you. They're ahead of the game in so many respects with what they're doing, whether they realise it or not. Their whole look and their combination of their antiques put together in modern settings, in modern ways, it's brilliant. Really just, and it's natural, they've just done it because that's what they like. To see one that's just evolved like that, because he just likes 1950s inspired sci-fi, and he likes skeletons, and he likes antlers, and he likes period old furniture. This chair, is this something you'd sell? Yeah, no, that's something we'd get rid of. We've had it probably 12 years. It's just a great shape. The, is it a club chair? Club isn't chair, it? yeah. Ow, oh, my knee. OK. It's had a lot done to it. Half the frame's new. With something like that, I just can't help myself. As soon as I've seen it, I'm like, well, I know who I'm going to try and sell it, so you should do it straight away, stop messing about. Just a great shape. I mean, I'm open to uh, a very sensible offer, considering its yeah. condition. So, you know, if it's a good bargain for you, I mean, I don't know what you've got in mind, really. Well-worn leather club chairs like these are always popular with designers and photographers. Drew knows that even if he does nothing to this chair, it will sell for around £220. Being a bit mean at 100. That's kind of the figure I had in my head. So. Yeah, it's just a great shape, good size, very commercial thing, something I can sell pretty easily. Um, trendy at the moment in any condition. Oh, I love that Rocket Man helmet. Do you wear it around the house when there's nobody, uh, when there's nobody else in? Only on, <laughs> only on Sundays. <laughs> he was telling me that that was the one that the guy wore at the Rocketeer premiere. The guy at the star put it on and, and walked around with it. There was only a 1,000 made of them. There you go. It's like a club. What do you reckon? <laughs> it's, On me Vespa. It's you, mate. It's you. <laughs> it's absolutely you. It really is. <laughs> well, it's good. And you've got a Batman suit as well. Yes. Yeah, you uh... just never cease to amaze me. I didn't see that before. <laughs> so you've got a time machine and a Batman suit. I made the majority of it. The cow came from America. And it's all wearable. Halloween. Do you it's, wear it? Uh... Oh, I did last Halloween, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Halloween's a big thing in your life, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, it's... <laughs> You can try that one as well if you want to. No, you're all right. <laughs> <laughs> I'll leave the rubber suit to you. And that owl's cool. Inside, it's all rigged up so that the wings will flap. Just a robot inside. And the head will turn, so it's a... I thought it was uh, the owl's a, sh a shop display thing, uh, but Drew had a look at it and he seemed to think that it was more of a film prop, so I'll have to do a bit of research on that and uh, see what it could be from. Do you pay a lot for it? I think it was two, 200. Around that 200. sounds really cheap. It's just so beautifully put together in the back, all those air rams and pumps. You can see the rams working inside. You just need a tiny little compressor, little tiny little thing like that, and you get this working. I'll, I'll happily give you a profit on that if you want to get rid of it. I'm sure you, you don't want to sell it, but... Well, it's one of Sarah's favourite favorite yeah. pieces, I'm No, afraid. it's lovely. You know, I'd happily... Would I double your money on it? I'd probably get very close, I think. Okay. Just as it is, yeah. you know, just yeah. buying it in to do it to, to fix it up. I don't think she's going to go for it. But... Can't blame her, I wouldn't. I think he's dropped incredibly lucky on something there for a couple hundred pounds. What a great thing. OK, here's the spare room, Drew. All right. Which, as you can see, is a bit uh, cluttered. Yeah. I think these have become quite... Yeah. I was going to display them. 
<laughs> oh, mine flashes. Oh, no. I was like nine. You know, oh, that's a good. Your gun's better than my gun. But they're becoming more and more popular. I've seen, I've seen one go for two hundred pounds. I think I bought that for forty-five. Okay. Well, I don't think I'm going to be able to buy those at reasonable money. This you might quite like. This is probably up your street. Yeah, I do like that. Uh, that's cool, isn't it? Yeah, I like that. Very original. Untouched. You put you to put that on there, and they just calibrate your eyes or something, don't they? To it, they move these. I've had that. It looks like a face, and when you turn it on its side. It's got, like, the eyes and the nose sticking out and the whole thing. So there's got that about it I liked as well. And it was also really well made, the engineering side of it, and the finish was fantastic. Antique optical instruments like these are popular with a small number of collectors, window dressers, photographers and prop houses. This example could sell for around £240. I'll go straight in with the highest bid, 50 OK. Yeah? Yeah. What's that? That's okay. uh, uh, sound activated. Ugh. <laughs> That's disgusting. Did that ter terrify yeah. They were just fascinated by it. I think it's brilliant. Oh, I like that. Are they foxes' well, skulls? They're foxes that I put in uh, a box there. But Where did you get the skulls from? They're just found on walks. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I like those. And you've made the little box nice. for yeah. it. It's just a nice little trophy thing. But in a quite a sort of old Victorian Jekyll Hyde type of way as well that I like. Could, um, for your type, £60? Pounds. Would that yeah. be all right? Does that cover yeah. you? Yeah, no, you can, go and find, you can go and find some more skulls. Well, I've already, I've already started the next, uh, <laughs> next one. <laughs> God, you've got a lot of dead foxes <laughs> around here, haven't you? <laughs> this just fits in with everything we do, so my regular customers are going to go, yeah, yeah, I like that. You can, take the, you can have the other two. Are you sure? Yeah. Really? Yeah. Oh, that's good of you. That's great, cos that one's... I think these could be mounted on the wall as well, couldn't they? I had a really good day today here with Drew and Julian. They've been uh, good fun and, uh, yeah, it's been an experience and I've enjoyed it, yeah. I mean, uh, yeah, initially I was just, like, I just thought, oh, it's just a little house call, we might get the odd bit, but to get a big pile of stuff and to see all his cool stuff and, uh, and to meet his family was, was great. I really liked it. What do you reckon, James? How much would you want? A quid? <laughs> I can't give you a quid. How about ten pounds? Ten pounds? Mm -hmm. Does that sound good? Is that a deal? Thanks, James. I'll take that for ten pounds. Thank mm -hmm. you, mate. James is tough. He's a hard bargainer. He got from me from a pound to ten pounds like that. Brilliant. He's a great guy, and he's got some mad gear. He really has. We've driven through hell and high water this week to find something, and I'm really excited at the stuff we've managed to score from Jeremy's place. It's brilliant. So I'm, I'm really pleased, and we can go back up to Wales and show the guys what we've found. A real pleasure. I have enjoyed it no end. I've enjoyed it too. What looked like a bad trip turned out okay, thanks to Jeremy. Drew now has a van full of unique and quirky items. He heads back to the shop confident that his salvage hunter reputation is well and truly intact. Cool, well, I enjoyed that. That was good. And good stuff. We did well. We bought well. We bought all the right bits and bobs there that I like. Some real oddments. I keep trying to buy normal stuff, I just can't do it. He's, he's made for this trade, I was going to say, he's made for the trade because he's slightly not quite with us. <laughs> you know? Back in Wales, the team gets word that Drew's heading back with a van full of goods. They clear the decks ready for the new stock. Mark, he's got tons. He's got half a van full. Hello, Mel Mel. Hello, babes. No. Hello. Hello, hello. How are you doing? All right. You look very, very, tired. very, very tired. Oh, there you go. Fruit picking ladders, Gaff. Need for restoration. Loads of different bits. We're doing it, testing your eyes on. <laughs> but it's cool, isn't it? That's cool. It's got a sculptural sort of look yes. to it, so I quite like that. Just needs a clean. But it was um, a strange collection of stuff. These are good. I'll have to restore these. Shop, pub, restaurant thing. It's always open. Exactly. This, we won't restore this, we'll sell it as is. Careful. 
Go in, come. Whoa, 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 you're going to rip it. Careful. Well, I know you haven't come back with a van full, but... It's all good stuff. It's all good stuff. And in a matter of days, the chair from Jeremy Trinder is bought by an advertising agency who run a trendy multi-use venue in Sheffield's regenerated Callum Island. The team have what they wished for, plenty of work to keep them busy and a shop full of stuff. Ding, ding. There's the shop. Drew and Julian set out on the road once again. This time, they're passing Sheffield, so Drew takes the opportunity to see where the chair from Jeremy ended up. He's visiting designers Tim and Sally, who've used it in their latest project. The chimney house is a meeting room, it's a meeting space for businesses, and then by evening, we transform into a pop-up dining hall. Tim. Drew. Hi, how are you? Good to see you. In the area, thought I'd call in. Sally. Hi, Drew. Hi nice to see Hi. you. Ah, there it is. That's it. Hey, looks good. It really complements what we do in here, so, yeah. It looks the part, it feels the part, it's tactile, it's interesting. People just instantly flock to it because they want to know what it feels like, what it is to sit in it. What I like about the chair is that not everybody will like it. It creates an interesting talking point. It looks good there. It does look the part, doesn't it, in the corner there? Yeah, it's nice. Coming here today and seeing our stuff in action, being used makes what I do seem real. It makes sense of it. And we so often don't see where it goes. So it's nice to see where it's being used and in a really modern and funky application. Couldn't be any better.